Shields up, Paladins, and welcome to a For Honor Hero Guide. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'll be talking to you all about the Berserker and how I like to use this particular character. The Berserker is one of the assassin characters within the Viking faction. He has a hard difficulty rating as well as he is a, a harasser and has short range. His base stats are his health is set to 120, his stamina is set to 140, and his sprint speed is set to 2.4 milliseconds. With all this being said and done, let's go ahead and jump on right on over to his feats. His tier 1 feats are Bounty Hunter, which is a passive ability. You gain health and stamina when you kill another hero. Rush, which is triggered to gain movement speed for a short duration. And Stun Trap, a set of traps that stuns and damages enemies. His tier 2 feats are Revenge Attack, which is a passive ability. Successful attacks when locked on fill the revenge meter. Bear Trap. Set a trap that damages and stops victims in their tracks. And Doom Banner, which is nearby enemies have less powerful defense. His tier 3 feats are Throwing Axe. Throwing Axe dealing moderate damage. Sharpen Blade. Attacks inflict low damage over time. And Fury, which is raised sprint speed slightly, attack and defense greatly. And finally for his tier 4 he has Berserker, which is raises sprint speed and defense greatly. This doesn't stack. Fire Flask, throw a projectile creating a fire effect over an area. And finally Fear itself. Nearby enemies have lower defenses. Now whenever it comes to the Berserker, a lot of people, a lot of his feats really is user specific. Really whenever it comes down to it. I've seen a lot of people run many different things whenever it comes to the Berserker, uh, but usually a role that I type of, that I kind of like to follow with an assassin character is the more health I can get back, the more longevity I can kind of be up on my own and do my own thing. So for me, I like running Bounty Hunter, which is of course whenever I kill somebody else, I gain health and stamina back. That's great. I love that. Um, Rush, as I've said with other uh, with other Viking characters, Rush is, is alright whenever you're just trying to get maybe to a point or if you're trying to maybe run the banner uh, to either to the ram or up to the gate, depending on which side you're on attacking or defending. Uh, but really, in my personal opinion, that's really the only time I see Rush being beneficial uh, because a lot of the times... You know, you might be using Rush, but you might be running into a gank situation. So, yes, even though that you are prolonging the point, you know, giving your teammates time to either get there or they're just going to say, screw you and die. Um, you know, that's that could be something beneficial there, but I uh, there's too many cons to the pros, uh, in my personal opinion on that. Also, Stun Trap. Stun Trap uh, could be beneficial. I, I see a lot of people on... Dominion use Stun Trap more uh, than Bounty Hunter, just because whenever you know you're trying to stop somebody or trying to you know get into a gang situation, you're trying to defend the point. It's great to start them out of stamina. Uh, now, a lot of times that when you get somebody out of stamina, they like to pretty much just sit there and block and parry everything you throw, uh, or the, or other times you can totally manhandle them. You know, and that's and that's great too to get them out of the point, get them out of out of the way, so where you can start capping your points again. Uh, but again, me personally, for for my tier one, I like running bounty hunter. So for tier two, again, I'm using Doom Banner on this. There's a lot of times in Breach that you are uh, usually in a two v one situation. Um, or sometimes in a 4v1, 3v1, you name it. You're, there, there's always many different situations that you're in. Having Doom Banner down while you're in the process of that fight will definitely, definitely help. Even if they pop Revenge, where uh, Doom Banner kind of negates that defense that Revenge gives you. Uh, so it kind of helps with getting them out of there quicker. Uh, plus, on top of that, if you have a prior that has their third tier feed, I think, um, that can take away their their shield whenever they're in revenge. That's also a great great thing as well. Uh, again, I've seen some Berserkers use revenge attacks. Me personally, I don't like revenge. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of things that revenge could do better than what it's already doing, so hence why I don't use that. 
uh, I rather I rather sit there and you know uh, and fight you normally without popping revenge, unless you know of course I'm getting ganked, then I'll of course pop it. Uh, bear trap again, just like stun trap. I see a lot of people use that more in Dominion than I do in Breach. There are some occasions that I do see bear traps being placed and in Breach. Don't get me wrong. Um, a lot of times that's great for if you're trying to specifically watch out for a point. Uh, maybe the uh, damage buff or the shield buff or anything like that. You can kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, but nine out of ten times. I'm usually never around whenever the bear trap goes off, hence why I don't use it. It's just a, it, to me that that's just a waste in my opinion. Hence why Doom Banner I can simply just pop pop it down then boom go right into the fight. Uh, tier three, uh, this one's kind of a user user friendly. Um, uh, all these are great for for a berserker throwing axe. Uh, the only thing it does, it takes, I believe, 50 HP uh, if you do connect with somebody now. Um, it was nerfed tremendously. I think it was only doing 25, maybe even 15 at one point in time. Uh, but now it's back up to doing 50 damage. So that's that's a great, great one-hitter. Uh, I would do it more if someone's not paying attention to you rather than... Uh, you're in a 1v1 fight because a lot of the times people will be able to dodge out of the way of that. That's the only kicker to that. It's very noticeable whenever you're getting ready to throw throw your axe. But if you're if someone's not paying attention, you to go ahead toss that son of a gun. <laughs> it, it it hurts. Um, sharpen blade again if you got uh, maybe a shaman on your team or anybody like that, or even bleed damage by itself. Bleed damage by itself is also good. Um, it, it does somewhat stack, not too much. Uh, it definitely does engage, uh, engages the Naboshi's um, passive ability. Well, I say passive ability, but it's one of her here specific stuff uh, that she has where her blade can stack on top of yours and stuff like that. Uh, that's, again, sh uh, sharpened blade is just oh, overall, you know, adding a little extra pressure to, to your opponent. You know, kind of get them freaking out, going, oh god, okay, I'm still up, but I'm bleeding, so I'm constantly losing health while this is going on. And, of course, Fury, uh, which is raises sprint speed slightly, attack and defense greatly. This is what I use. Again, as a Berserker, I'm trying to kind of stay up as long as I can, so I'm going to pop Fury pretty much whenever I'm getting ready to go into a gank situation. That's going to increase my defense. It's also going to increase my attack. So if I combine that with either, you know, Doom Banner or even for my fourth tier fear itself, you know, I'm kind of using a lot of that in general. So I'm, I'm just pumping out damage. Uh, pretty much I want people to either, you know, be like, okay, let's get the Berserker out of there. The, she, he or she, depending that you can be both male and female with the Berserker. Um, so depending on which, you know, let's get them out of there because they're going to pump out a lot of damage if they stack everything together. Um, again, that's that's really personal preference, whatever for his or her third tier feats. But I personally like using Fury. Now for his fourth tier, uh, again, I'm using Fear itself over Fire Fox and Berserker. I see some Berserkers now uh, also run... Uh, Berserker, uh, which is of course raises sprint speed and defense correctly. Now, where they say doesn't stack, back in the day when this game was first released, Fury and Berserker actually stacked upon each other. Uh, so you were also, even though you're raising your sprint speed slightly, but you're attacking defense greatly, you were also improving your defense once again with Berserker on top of that. <laughs> Uh, so you were, you know, you're pretty much an unstoppable force at that point in time. It didn't matter if you had fear and stuff or anything like that. You're pretty much unstoppable. Of course, you would die eventually, but you were pretty tanky at that point in time. So some people still run Berserker because, again, it, you're increasing your defense. Not necessarily your attack this time, but more so just your defense in general. And that's also great. Um, so there are times that I do switch between Berserker and Fear itself as a Berserker. So that is some, something to keep in mind as well. Fire Flask, again, is always great to have. Uh, but more so as Berserker, I feel like the other two 
uh, perks that um, that he has, has does more does more for the team rather than just fire flask. And then of course fear itself. Nearby enemies have lower defenses. That that's great for you know the big guy or anything like that. And whenever you're in a gang situation, pop fear itself. You'll be doing damage regardless if you have you know fury, doom banner, and all that other stuff set on them. So that's what I use feet wise, perk wise. I'm running devour, endurance, and headhunter for my perks. Uh, again, more health, more endurance, and I'm getting more health back once once I kill somebody. So, that like I said, I, I've got a little theme that I like to go for whenever I'm using the Berserker or really any assassin, is that I try to be more self-sufficient than I possibly can, and I really like to hunt down the low, lower end targets than really anybody else. Uh, that's kind of what I like to do there. So, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump on over to the hero specific moveset. So, on the screen right now, you will see that I went into the hero tactics to kind of show you the combos of what the game wants to really teach you about the Berserker and stuff like that. Uh, so, I'm not really going to go into the, into the combos specifically, uh, since you can see them up on the screen. But I will talk to you all about what the game, uh, text-wise, in the hero specifics, wants to teach you. So, of course, Renown, since you are an assassin, you earn more Renown in 1v1 fights by killing enemy heroes and getting kill streaks to unlock your feats in a match. Of course, for Revenge Mode, as we all know, boost damage and health, all attacks are un uninterruptible, and parries and throws knock enemies down, attacks are up, auto parried upon activation. Now, defense. Now, since, of course, you are an assassin, you have a reflex type of defense, so your guard stance only remains active for a limited amount of time. Of course, now you also have a deflex since you are an assassin, which is dodged in the direction of an incoming attack just before impact, it will deflect it. The deflect can be followed up with brute force. Now that you got the bear mauler finisher, bear mauler finishers are always un unblockable. Dance and demauler, the dance of the parried blades, infinite chain, can flow directly into the bear mauler chain. Top heavy finishers. A top heavy attack cannot be chained further, as even as an opener. If it's not an opener, it will be unblockable, but also has decreased damage. Um, that's pretty much if you're in your infinite infinite combo. If you finish with a top heavy, uh, that's pretty much saying, okay, I'm done with a combo. Here you go. Now that can be fainted. Keep that in mind. Um, but also that is something that you'll be doing if you do finish with that you'll be doing less damage with it uh unstoppable faint basic basic chain openers uh initiated in, immediately after our faint are uninterruptible uh unstoppable onslaught attacks or attacks after our chain opener all have uninterruptible stance alternating infinite uh, so during uh dance of the parried blades Attacks need to be altered between light and heavy to continue. Light chain starters, head slashers, spin chop, and skilled slash can act as chain starters, but have to be followed by a heavy attack. Heavy attack chain starters, zone attack, and slashing rush can act as chain starters, but have to be followed by a light attack. Close combat, if you miss any basic attack or a head crusher, then... Uh, the missed attacks recovery can be cancelled by a zone attack, slashing rush, or a dodge. So now we go into the head crusher sprint. If a target is outside the normal leap range, when attempting head crusher, the berserker will sprint before initiating the leap. And then, of course, you have cancel heavy attacks. You can cancel the startup of a heavy opener with a dodge. And, of course, the undodgeable spin chop. Spin chop is undodgeable. So that is all the hero specific stuff that the berserker has to offer now I'm kind of talking a little bit more how I like to use the berserker it, berserker is really one of those faint heavy type of characters to be totally honest with you you have to do a lot of feints uh, to be decent with a berserker and the reason why I say that is that a lot of the times that people actually went into a 1v1 and trained against a bot berserker set them up to level 3 and just trained against them uh, because Berserkers back then were one of the toughest assassins to actually kind of get the hang of and kind of um, 
can be decent with. Now, once you were decent, you're pretty much unstoppable back then. Uh, but now you kind of have to watch out with what you throw, how you throw it, uh, because your attacks are very, very easily read. Uh, so there's a lot of fainting involved. If you're not a decent fainter, and but want to play as the Berserker, I would go into a Hero Tactics or just a Hero Specific, maybe. And just really play around with the Berserker. Uh, that That's the best possible way that I can say. The Berserker overall is still a great character. I love playing as him. Uh, but there are still some things that I'm learning as the Berserker, as in fainting a lot of my attacks. Uh, a lot of times, and, it, and now the thing is, a lot of people are expecting a lot of the attacks to be fainted because they see it constantly. So hence why that also throws people off guard, like, oh crap, you know, they're not going to faint this. Or, you know, they're while they're expecting you to because they see everyone else do it. Um... So that's kind of some things about the Berserker. Uh, hopefully I answered a lot of questions, comments, concerns. If you have something else that I missed in this video, definitely drop a comment down below. I would love to read it. As always, guys, I will see you in the next video.